And talking of high flyers, Richard Jobson is up and away as well, but uh, not in an aeroplane, but in a bus. You see, we let him out of his hole, which is located over there, and he went off to uh, find the post-punk band The Cure. Now, their lead singer, Robert Smith, was a wee bit late for the interview, so Richard gave us a quick tour around the band's bus. Now, a hundred years ago, bands used to travel up and down the M1 on dirty old transits. Nowadays, they travel on exquisite looking machines like this. Now, in you come, follow me. That's where, obviously, where the driver sits. Any idiot could tell you that. But back here, we have a spot where the chaps in the band can relax and talk about psychology, philosophy, read their book and all kinds of you know, comfortable positions. Here we have a kitchen now. Here's a microwave if you want to kind of, I don't know, burn one of your fans. Or not. Here we have mustards and mayonnaises and hi-fi systems. And here is a loo. You don't want to go in there, but what you want to do is follow me up the stairs because up here we have the rock band on tour a la first class. Come up to the first class lounge and enjoy the comfort of being a pop star. Here you have your JVC television, you have air conditioning, you have cushions galore in case you want to have a wee kind of, you know, anyway. And here we have lots and lots of room to lie down. And up here, follow me, you see that lovely hi-fi? This is where the bedroom is, the bed suite. Now this is, well I better not go in there because these kind of things are private, but this is where the young musician sits down and relaxes and thinks about the money he's making, the people that adore him, the new album that's gone platinum, and next year having to spend the whole year out of the country because he's made so much money. It's my This is the last tour. It is, definitely. Does that mean it's the, the last we'll hear of the, the cure? No. Um, it's just trying to explain, you know the difference between touring and playing concerts. And uh, it's just the idea of doing something and then going out on tour to promote it, which is however different you try and make a tour, it's all you end up doing. Right. So, night after night. So I figured going towards the other extreme, just like playing things, events, when we want to. With completely disregarding whether we've got a new record or anything like that. It's a bit late in the day to keep doing these tours. And I know. But um, it's been good. Uh, we've been the to, years like, are coming on, you they, said. They certainly <laughs> are, yeah. But we've been to like, Hungary and Yugoslavia this time, Portugal, Greece. It's been, you know, pretty exotic, really. This, this, just talking about the album quickly, this album's kind of gone back into that area of faith, maybe. A little bit more kind of lonesome, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know, it's it's like when you do anything, you have to live with it. It's like I felt, you know, a bit morose, I suppose, at a certain time early last summer. I suspect because of 30 creeping towards me. And, right. um, You've got nothing else to be upset about, no, have you? No, that's no, that's what I mean. Uh, and it was only for like a short period, but I, I liked the idea of, of The Cure getting back involved in something a bit more intense. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, I forgot that like a year later, I'd have to be explaining away why. why. Yes, to people <laughs> like me. Yeah. And I hear you're a bit of a football player, this football here, you're a bit yeah, of a... Yeah, we, we, um, Team Cure got, got going again, um, Shelley and Orphan, the support band, they've got a couple of good players. And where are you situated in that? Uh, I was, my usual role, midfield general. Music, Robert, Just this is the Cure music. This is only one of the Cure music. Oh, uh, right, is. Walt Disney, Yeah. Pickwick. An old standby. Nice. Is, yeah, is that something that, put, point in the day, do you listen to that? Um, most of this stuff's like after the concert when we're back on the bus. You know. All right, let's have a look at it's this. It's mostly party stuff. Yes. All right, so it really starts moving on this yeah. bus. It's a shaking bus. Have you seen this bus rocking down on the motorway? It's probably because they're listening to A Merry Mancini Christmas. <laughs> Is that not right, Robert? What's your favourite tape of this whole... This, this one. Swing bands. Big bands. Swing bands. And it's a BBC cassette. Well. I mean, that's basically what you are, aren't you? Yeah, that's what I'd like us to be, eventually. Yeah. I think we should move into swing. I'm serious, I, I really think we've, I think we've taken the, the doom and gloom as far as it can go. Yeah, but now you were almost there anyway. Yeah, uh, 
hinting at it in the love cats and some of that stuff. You can't get away from what you really are, Robert, are you? You're a big doom head. I'm not. <laughs> Pop star. <laughs> Good old Glenn, I knew he wouldn't let us down, hey? Oh, this is brilliant, isn't One it? One of the everything, benefits yeah. of having him on the programme, you know. Oh, but everything oh, here, look, we've got the whiskey, right. tartan, we've got it all, but we've been missing, we've something missing. What's missing? We've got a bit of Heather. Heather? Oh, the makeup girl, she's crazy. Did you fancy her too? This is the Botanical Gardens, goodness oh. sake, there we are, a bit of oh. dressing on the table. Actually, your girlfriend's here tomorrow, Leela Aiken. Yeah, so will Barbara Castle talking about the over 50s, but say goodbye, Paul. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.